Hello, everyone, and neither welcome or welcome back to the Gender Libertarian Podcast. If you do like this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, and on my Patreon page. Okay, so I promised you guys a separate episode specifically on the Alex Morse situation, which obviously we are here now. And what's crazy is that ever since I discussed it in the last episode that I was going to be making this episode, more allegations have come to light where this story has gone from being just a really gross and sad story to one that might actually have some serious ramifications for the Massachusetts Democratic Party if these allegations turn out to be true. But specifically, I wanted to talk about this case. First of all, it's, just, it's a ball of crazy. Like this story is absolutely nuts. I will warn you at points, you're going to have to really pay attention to try to follow this because this is just, oh my God, it, it gets wild in some places. And it's also proof of a certain axiom that I have told you guys before. And I will tell you again, because this story kind of proves it. And that is that, At the core of every bullshit Me Too allegation, and trust and believe this will happen with anti-racism too, don't say I didn't warn you, but once you get down to the core of what exactly is the real story here, it's always some kind of petty, either personal or professional dispute, disagreement, however you want to phrase it, and then you find this way of putting on this trumped up charge on someone, not necessarily because you genuinely think that something inappropriate happens sexually, but because you have this weapon and you want to take out somebody. So you're going to use this weapon to accomplish that goal. That is what this is at its core. That is what this is all about. So Let me go ahead and start with explaining for those of you who may not have followed this or tried to follow it and then were just like, I can't even keep up with this. So, Alex Morse, this guy, I almost call him a kid. He's not a kid. He's 31 years old, which bear this in mind. He is 31 years old. For what it's worth, he is openly gay, which I think that matters less than some people do, but that is what it is. He is openly gay. He is the mayor of Holyoke, Massachusetts, and has been so since the age of 22. So this kid at 31 has been the mayor of a city since he was 22 years old. He founded back when he was in high school, he founded the first LGBTQ kind of organization for his high school. He's been very active. He was very active in promoting cannabis legalization and promoting Holyoke as a place where anybody who wants to engage in the actual like business of cannabis production and selling, kind of promoting them as a place for that. I mean, this this guy is basically out of the progressive central casting. Like this is this is exactly what the progressive movement is looking for in candidates and he is currently running to replace the current congressional democratic congressional congressman excuse me representative for massachusetts district one now that's the other half of this story is the current representative for massachusetts district one is richard neal now in contrast to morse neal has been in congress for almost as long as i have been alive he was initially elected in 1989 and he has been there ever since he was the representative for district two and then became the representative for District 1 in 2016, if memory serves. But more important to the story is that Neil is the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, which is an incredibly powerful committee, obviously very instrumental in setting economic policy in the U.S. And so obviously, Neil is somebody who is very important and very powerful, one of the most powerful Democrats in the House. So bear all that in mind when we start kind of going down this rabbit hole of who did what to who and who alleges what and what the allegations are and who says they are and are not involved because this this is shady. This is so fucking shady. So let's go ahead and start. I want to read to you the accusations against Morse and try as I might, I cannot find the letter like the the un like the whole letter that the college democrats sent to the university of massachusetts amherst where also another thing that alex morse has done in his life he's already been an adjunct professor too at 31 i mean 
I feel like a slacker right now. This kid has done more in his life than I will probably ever do in mine. So anyway, they send a letter basically saying that they do not want to associate with Morse anymore because of certain sexual improprieties. Let me read you the article that ran in the the UMass student newspaper. Because like I said, that's the only place I can find this. I can't find the letter itself, which... Why have you people failed me by not leaking this letter onto the internet? But I, I want you I want you to understand just how absolutely freaking absurd these allegations are. So the headline for the story is College Democrats allege inappropriate behavior between Hollyoke Mayor Alex Morse and college students. Secondary head, the student organization banned the mayor from attending future events. And by the way, this this piece does not have a byline. It is just written by Collegian Staff, which is the name of the paper. So we don't even get like a name of who wrote this piece. And that's kind of important too, because that's another wrinkle to this story that we'll get to. But let's go ahead and read this piece. In a letter to Hollyoke Mayor Alex Morse on Thursday, the College Democrats of Massachusetts disavowed their groups from the Progressive Hopeful, alleging that Morse had inappropriate sexual relations with college students before and during his congressional campaign and used his position of power for romantic or sexual gain. All right, let's stop right there for a second. Now, when you see somebody make an allegation that somebody used their position of power for romantic or sexual gain, that puts a certain image in your head. That puts more of like a Harvey Weinstein-esque sort of picture in your head of somebody using their position in order to gain sexual favors from somebody else. So, mind you, that is how this is phrased. Let's look at the actual allegations. Numerous instances over the course of several years have shown that it is no longer appropriate to encourage interaction between college Democrats and Alex Morse, according to the letter, which was provided to the Massachusetts Daily Collegian by a source inside one of the student organizations. The behavior in question centered on three issues. The first issue alleges that Morse regularly matched with students on dating apps, including Tinder and Grindr, who were as young as 18 years old. These students included members of the College Democrats of Massachusetts, UMass Amherst Democrats, and other groups in the state. Um, I'm sorry, what? First of all, Alex Morse does not control the algorithms for Tinder or Grindr. Like, that's not even how this works. Those are dating apps where basically you put your information in, other people put their information in, there is some algorithm that decides you might like this person, and so then you either click or swipe or whatever, dating apps creep me the hell out. But really? 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 Your problem is that this dude is on dating apps, and mind you, he's single, he's 31 years old, and what, he's matching with other adults? I, I, I mean, we're not even talking underage people here. And for what it's worth, and I'll go ahead and bring this up now because I don't think it's mentioned in this letter. Morse does freely admit that he did meet up with and hook up with students attending the University of Massachusetts, but none of them were his students. None of them were his students. And according to UMass code, that, that, that's not... That, that's not off limits. You're not supposed to hook up with your own students for obvious reasons, but there's nothing in their code of conduct that prohibits a adjunct professor or any other professor having sexual relations with students that are not their students. So nothing wrong here. Nothing wrong. A 31-year-old man was matched to possible 18-year-olds, although it seems like the people that he really matched with and met up with were in their 20s. <laughs> this uh, let's keep going because this is just, this just gets more and more absurd. The second issue, using college Democrats events to meet college students and add them on Instagram, adding them to his close friend's story and DMing them, both of which have made young college students uncomfortable, according to the letter. We've had, we have heard countless stories of Morse adding students to his close friend's stories and direct messaging members of college Democrats on Instagram in a way that makes these students feel pressured to respond due to his status, the letter read. Okay, so his second offense is meeting people in person and then following them on social media. And then I guess, I, I didn't even know you could do this on Instagram, but apparently you have like, well, actually, I think I did know. I just didn't realize it had a name, but there's like 
ways that you can post things and you can choose who sees them. You can see, you'd be like, everybody can see them or only like the people I follow can see them. Or I guess you can also limit it even more by saying just this group of people I follow can see them. And for what it's worth, Morse has said that the content that he posted to these close friends stories were like pictures of food and flowers in his backyard, like basic bitch pictures that the rest of us post. It's not like he was posting up dick pics or anything. He was just posting up like normal, like random pictures. And it's like, okay, what, what, what are you accusing this man of? And what DMing people on Instagram? I've DM'd people on Instagram. People have DM'd me on Instagram. It's not that big a deal. Like what, what is, what, what about any of this is making anybody feel uncomfortable? Honestly. And by the way, nobody puts a name to this. Nobody comes out and says, hi, it is me, blah, blah, blah name. And I felt this certain way about a thing that Alex Morse did. Nobody puts their name to this. It's just students or some people. Like, what the hell is this? Anyway, moving on to the third accusation. The third issue having sexual contact with college students, including at UMass Amherst, where he teaches in the Greater Five Colleges Consortium. In a statement provided to the Daily Collegiate Friday, Friday evening, Moore submitted to having consensual adult relationships, including some with college students, and apologized to anyone I have made feel uncomfortable. I want to be clear that every relationship I've had has been consensual. However, I also recognize that I have to be cognizant of my position of power, Moore said in a statement. I'm committed to meeting with any person or group, including the college Dems, to answer any questions and address any concerns. So, yeah. For what it's worth, nobody has said that Morse raped anybody, that he sexually assaulted anybody, that he touched anybody inappropriately, that he acted in any kind of lewd or inappropriate way towards anybody, not that he's made any kind of inappropriate comments towards anybody. He's not put his hands on anybody who didn't want him to put his hands on them. This is all about consensual sex that this man has had with adults who happen to be college students and happen to be younger than him. Marginally. This is absolutely fucking absurd. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, what, what are you, what are you accusing this man of? Nothing? I, I mean, and like I said, remember back to how it was originally, originally framed that he was using his position of power to gain romantic and sexual advantages. At no point has anybody alleged that there was any kind of quid pro quo in any of his relationships. Nobody ever said that, oh, he said that if I sleep with him, I'll see what I can do about your college grade. Nobody's ever said, oh, if he, uh, he told me that if I sleep with him, he'll get me a job in his administration or in his campaign. Nothing like that occurred. Absolutely fucking nothing. I, I'm just, I'm blown away by this. And so obviously there has been conversation about how this, and, I'm, and maybe, maybe I'm being a little overly generous here, but there has been allegations made that in making these accusations against Alex Morse, that the college Democrats are leaning into the old, disgusting, homophobic trope of gay men being predators or straight up pedophiles. And to be honest, I don't think that's what their intent was. I mean, you're talking about people in their teens and early 20s who don't know a lot about a lot of things and you would have to be of either a certain age or know a certain amount of information or a certain type of information to know that that is how gay men were portrayed in this country for decades. That basically that was, that was the thing that we had to keep gay men out of the community and out of the neighborhoods because they're going to come rape your kids. I don't know if they know that history. I think they're coming at this in a very modern way of knowing that if you accuse somebody of doing something that you can make sound sexually appropriate, inappropriate, I, excuse me, to another person, that somehow this is like a magic bullet somehow. So much has been made of Morse's gayness. I don't know how relevant it is to this particular conversation. And I would argue that if Morse were straight and these were college age women that he was matching up with and hooking up with, 
we wouldn't even be having this conversation because dude would have been forced to drop out because as everybody knows, if there's anybody in this country that apparently cannot consent to sex, it's college aged women. I, I, oh my God, that, and that's a whole, whole nother conversation, but you know, you know how bad this would be if it was 31 year old man is having sex with something, 20 something college students. You know how it would be, you know. I don't have to explain it to you because we, we've already stripped away so much sexual agency from college age females that, I mean, you can basically claim anything, claim anything wasn't consensual, even after you said it was consensual. So there, there's, I mean, I guess there is an argument to be made there, but I, I really don't think that was their intent. I don't think they meant to make this be a gay thing. I think they meant this in more of a power dynamic sort of way. And we'll get to that in a minute. But to bring it back around to the allegations, like, that's it. Those are all of them. I, that's, that's, that's it. I, so, anyway, this winds up on social media as it does. And, obviously, people reacted in various sorts of ways. Um, 75% of the people on social media reacted the way I just reacted, which was basically like, what are you accusing this guy of? Like, what? What did he do wrong? Like, what, what, what are you even trying to imply here? But then you had 25% of people who want to be like, oh, well, he should know better than to have sex with college students because, uh, you, you know, you got the power structures and the balance and he's a mayor and he's running for Congress and these are college students. And I'm just like, oh boy, um, they're adults. College students are adults. College students can freely choose to engage in whatever sort of sexual activity they wish to engage with, with whoever they wish to engage with, whether that person be somebody in their class, whether that person be in the next class up from them, whether that person is a 31-year-old mayor and congressional candidate, I mean, that's up to them. And so this whole idea that somehow college students are this protected class of people or people in their early 20s are this protected class of people Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Can we not keep extending childhood past the point where we've already extended it? And for what it's worth, people made hay about the age difference here. Now, we're talking a 31-year-old man and 20-something men. I mean, men in their 20s. That's not a massive age gap here, people. And the whole idea around that, of pointing that out, was basically some people implying and some people outright saying that if there is a large age gap between two people, that the younger person cannot possibly be fully consenting to the sexual relationship because the older person has some kind of perceived edge over them due to their more advanced age and experiences in life, to which... I have to laugh, laugh very, very, very hard because <laughs> when my husband and I met, I was 23 and he was 36. So my question is, when exactly did I gain the ability to consent to sex with the man who is now my husband? Was it when I turned 25, 30, 35, when we got married? What the fuck? And let me tell you something, I, not to get too deep into my own personal relationships here, but the idea of who finessed who here, yeah, it wasn't, he wasn't preying on me using his age. No, that's not how this worked. That is not how this worked in any way, shape or form. But again, it's this idea of sexual agency and the fact that people want to keep expanding the amount of time to which people do not have sexual agency due to their age. And obviously, this is different from the conversation of actual underage people being able to consent. That's a whole nother thing. We're talking people of legal age who can consent or at least should be able to. It's just, it, it, that got wild. That got to be a wild ass conversation on social media. And I was just like, 
I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Of, of course somebody in their 20s can consent to sex with whoever they want to consent to. Even if that person's in their late 30s. I mean, I did it. And it wasn't like, oh my God. It's just this this whole idea that there is a group or class of people that basically just sit around all day waiting for some other group or class of people to come sexually prey on them. It's just so bizarre and gross to me and just strips people of sexual agency and leads to bullshit accusations like this. But if you thought we were done with the grossness here, no, we're just getting started because, because this is what got leaked to The Intercept, which I think that's also a very interesting part of the story too, is a lot of the counterintelligence that we have on this story was leaked to The Intercept. And I think the reason for that is, is that when the story first broke, Glenn Greenwald came out extremely hard in favor of Alex Morse and against those making the accusations against him, because this is not an entirely academic discussion for Glenn Greenwald. If you don't know, he's one of the co-founders of The Intercept, and he is also an openly gay man who has received plenty of criticism, including people basically accusing him of being a predator or borderline pedophile for dating and marrying a man much, much younger than himself. And it's worked out well for them. I mean, they're still together. They've been together for, gosh, like 20 years now. They have a family. His husband's a member of Brazilian parliament. So this is not something that is just kind of a, a sort of just story for Glenn. Like This is kind of personal for him. So he's come out very hard and pointed out that like, yeah, this is, this is a disgusting thing to say about a gay man. It's disgusting to try to portray a gay man as a predator for dating somebody younger than him. Like that's, that's gross. You shouldn't do that. So I think it's interesting that a lot of this got leaked to the intercept. And I think it does have something to do with Glenn Greenwald's position on this. But anyway, so we come to find out um, college Democrats on UMass campus through various chats and screenshots that got leaked to the intercept we find out and i'm going to i'm going to kind of paraphrase and shorten some of this up for you guys because this story gets a little hairy in certain spots but basically this whole idea this scheme of trying to find something against morse started back in last october so we go all the way back to i mean almost a year ago at this point um the daily collegiate story was published on august 7th so they've been trying since last october to make this happen and my first thing is first of all you've been up dude's ass for this long and you couldn't find anything like this dude is that clean that squeaky clean that you couldn't find anything on this guy but wait it gets worse we're not done with how worse this gets so and I'm going to try to keep this straight for you guys because this, this does get kind of weird. So Timothy Ennis, who is currently the chief strategist for College Democrats UMass, but was the president of the chapter when this whole scheme to try to find something on Alex Morse got started, is one player. The other player here is Andrew Abramson, who is the current president of College Democrats UMass. This started because Ennis thought that if he could find some kind of incriminating dirt on Morse, that Neil would give him an internship in his administration. Now, Neil's campaign swears up and down that they had nothing to do with this. That thought right there does not sound to me like a thought that would occur in somebody's head organically. Like that is... That is a very weird stretch to expect me to have somebody make all by themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would you think that by cooking up this harebrained scheme to try to smear this man as being some kind of sexual predator would gain you access to the Neil campaign, especially, especially given our current environment where you can't do anything without being found out. You can't do any kind of shady shit without somebody finding out who did it. So engaging in this kind of scheme, I would think to anybody who is thinking things through would pretty much tell you that like doing this would kill my chances of ever getting in with the Neil campaign because obviously once it becomes public, they can't have anything to do with you. 
And pretty much at this point, nobody can have anything to do with Ennis because of this whole thing. So I'm not buying this idea that the Neil campaign had nothing to do with it. Because that just, I'm sorry, this idea that if you do this thing, you will get an internship just sounds like a thought that was put in Ennis's head. I do not think that came out of his head all by himself. So that's my opinion on that. So what ends up happening is they concoct this sort of... I'm trying to think of the best way to explain this to you guys. Basically, they know that Morse is active on dating apps. So they go fishing for his dating apps to try to either find something incriminating on them or to basically honeypot him into saying or doing something that is sexually inappropriate or incriminating. So then they can then take that evidence and then go take it somewhere. I'm not entirely sure where the initial plan was to take the information, whether it was to the Neil campaign or leak it to the press or do, I don't know. I don't, this, this whole idea is just fucking stupid to me. And that's why I'm just, I'm not thinking this came up organically. Like this, this scheme is just a little too, it's a little too much to just be like some shit you thought up one day. So anyway, they try to bait Morse into interacting with somebody on these dating apps and being inappropriate. Obviously, they were not successful. What they ended up having to go with, and this is this is how clean this dude is. This is how clean Morse is. They end up having to go with an Instagram DM conversation between Morse and Abramson, where basically the backstory of the chat is that Morse and Abramson were together on a panel at some function, I think it might have been a College Democrats function. I'm not entirely sure, but basically they were together on a panel. And so afterwards, Morse reached out to Abramson to thank him for his time, which, guys, if you are ever on a panel or you're ever invited to an event, yeah, reach out to your co-panelists, thank them for their time, reach out to the organizers, thank them for their efforts. That is what you're supposed to do. This is what people who have any clue in their head how to network or just be a decent human being, know how to act. That's what you're supposed to do. And so the follow-up questions, they will eat DMs. I was like, hey, it was nice. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being on the panel with me. You know, basic stuff. And then he asks them, how was your weekend? Like, you know, just like idle chit-chat stuff. Like, you know, how was your weekend? And I would some replied like, oh, I'm at my mom's house and I got to go to this other event. And that pretty much seems to be the end of that. Somehow or another, Abramson, I, I, and I don't know if he was being honest with this or just trying to reach for anything he could possibly find, construes this as Morse trying to get into his pants. That is not trying to get into somebody's pants. Being nice to somebody, being cordial to someone does not mean you're trying to fuck them. It just means you're being a nice person. You, 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 you're thanking somebody for their time and you're being nice by asking a follow-up question about their life. This is how you like make friends or it's also how you demonstrate that you're probably a nice person because that's, that's how this works. That's how networking works when you're kind of in this world. You want to leave people with a good impression of you, not only because, you know, it's just a nice thing to do, but then when somebody else is like, maybe there's a third person conversation going on and your name comes up, the other person's like, yeah, that's a cool dude. You should totally reach out to him for whatever project you're doing. Like that's how, that that's how you get invited to other events. It's like being a decent person and being thankful and being nice. That's how this works. That's all that is. It's networking. It's not trying to have sex with you, dude. Oh my God. Anyway, so this is what they have to go with. And in the follow-up letter that College Democrats released after this whole thing blew up is that they're basically calling that, and, and I'm trying to remember the exact verbiage, communicating in a way that our generation views as intimacy. Excuse me? <laughs> what? Oh my God, no wonder. No wonder this generation is so sexually screwed up. That's, that's not intimacy. That's, that's not intimacy, like at all. Like not even a little bit. That's just being a normal person, just kind of shooting the shit in the DMs. Like that's not, oh my God. So anyway, 
this is what they end up having to go with. And that's it. This is this is their evidence that I I cannot I cannot overemphasize how absolutely stupid and insane insane this is. But there's another wrinkle to this story, and that is that Ennis was actually one of Richard Neal's students when he was teaching at UMass. Apparently, Neal was teaching a journalism class. Ennis was one of his students. Ennis was a big fan of Neil and basically made it known that he would like to enter politics. So again, I'm not buying this statement from the Neil campaign saying that their hands are clean. I'm sorry. I'm just not. There's, there's too much coincidence here. There's too much shit that doesn't make sense. There's too many connections here. I'm just, I'm no, Mm-mm. not buying it, not buying it, but to keep going with the story. Cause we're not done yet. Oh no, we are not done. We've got more, more disgustingness to talk about because here's where the Massachusetts Democratic Party looks like they're involved in this. And this was also leaked to The Intercept and confirmed by five anonymous people who have decided to remain anonymous due to not wanting to deal with the blowback from this. But it is apparently sourced from five different people. So, all right, I'll, I'll go with that. Veronica Martinez, who is the executive director of the Massachusetts Democratic Party, was apparently in contact with the college Democrats on this particular situation slash issue slash scheme slash whatever you want to call it. Um, Their explanation, the Massachusetts Democratic Party explanation, is that the only reason they were talking to the college Democrats was to give them legal advice and media advice as to whether they should be speaking to the media, what they need to do legally now that this has become public knowledge. Um, Yeah, sources inside have said that it went a little deeper than that, that there might have been some involvement from the Massachusetts Democratic Party in the preparation and carrying out of this particular scheme. That part of the story is a bit developing, but that is the part that if that is true, If that can be proven, that has some massive ramifications for the party. Like that's, that's, first of all, that's election interference because you're deliberately trying to take out an opponent in a primary race. Also, that's just fucking shady and gross. Yeah. And it reeks of protectionism because you're trying to protect Neil because he is a powerful Democrat and you don't want him to lose his spot to a 31-year-old progressive. Mm Mm-mm. I see you. I see you, Democrats. And there's another case floating around out there that's along the same lines of a young progressive male who, it seems, is trying to get drummed out of his primary over some revenge porn type stuff that he apparently did in middle school. But apparently there's a whole campaign to try to get rid of him from establishment Democrats. Yeah, I, I see you. I see this shady shit. And it's like... At, at, there's a point where you kind of want to point and laugh and say, we told you that this would be used against you. We told you these weapons would be used against you, but it's it's still not okay. And it's still not something to point and laugh at because this is a situation where this is now entering into politics. And it's something where one group of people is trying to suppress another group of people using these tactics. And that is not okay. That's that's horrible. That's a horrible way to run your party. So moving back to whether or not this, well, not whether or not it was a hit job. Obviously it was a hit job, uh, clearly at this point, but come to find out that before the Daily Collegian ran this piece, um, it was pitched to both Politico and Business Insider. Um, It was pitched to Alex Thompson over at Politico and pitched over to Grace Panetta at Business Insider And Panetta has confirmed that. She has confirmed that it was pitched to her and that it was Ennis and Abramson that sent her the initial email telling her about Alex Morse and making these allegations and basically trying to get her to cover the story or to get Alex Thompson to cover the story. Obviously, both of them passed on it because they're both um, professional journalists with major outlets who are not going to put their names to this kind of bullshit. Like, come on now. Like, okay, professional people are not, uh-uh, no. 
<laughs> Not when you've got a reputation to maintain and you've got an, an organization to protect. You don't run this shit. Anywho, college Democrats basically tried to portray the original letter as a group project, saying that is basically the whole group, college Democrats, were behind this letter. And various members have come forth and said, "Uh uh-uh, no, this was all leadership. We didn't have nothing to do with this. We don't approve of it. Clearly, there are members who don't approve of it enough to be leaking information to the press about what exactly happened here. So, yeah, this is all just, ooh, Lord. Ooh, Lord. But Alex Morse has been doing press on this, which, I mean, hardly the thing that one wants to be doing right now when they're trying to run in a congressional primary, but it is what it is. And his reaction, I think, has been really great. Um, The first interview, well, at least the first major interview he gave was with BuzzFeed. And he point blank said, like, I'm not apologizing. I'm not apologizing for being gay. I'm not apologizing for having sex. I'm not apologizing for using dating apps. And and I'm paraphrasing this last part here. This whole thing is freaking absurd. And we need more sex positivity in this country. So I mean, the last part, he did say the part about sex positivity, though, which I do think he is absolutely correct. Because this whole thing, like, what what are we talking about? We're talking about a man having consensual sex with other adults. Like, what? What? What are we doing here? What is, and that, the fact that anybody thought that this could be ginned up into something that is like, he did something sexually inappropriate is, I, I, there are not words. There are not words. This is where we're at now. This is where we're at in this country. Like I said, this whole story is wild because there's so many layers. There's. The layer of trying to sex shame someone. There's the layer of somebody trying to destroy someone else's political career to advance their own. There's the angle of the establishment Democratic Party trying to get rid of a progressive candidate because he is threatening an establishment candidate who is very powerful. And by the way, I saw in reporting today that that Morse is within five points of Neil. So he might pull this off. He might win despite all of this. Maybe in, in not even in spite of, but because of all of this, because of the way he has been treated by establishment Democrats. And for what it's worth, I there's a piece that I will be releasing in the nearish future on the topic of how establishment Democrats have been treating progressives lately. But it's it's a little I I got some questions, let's just say that. But yeah, this whole thing, like I said, this story. The story is horrible. It's horrible on every level. There's waves of horribleness. Like it's just layers, like an onion. Like just when you think you've reached the center, nope, we got another whole nother layer of ugly. But this is what a lot of us who have been out here trying to warn people about the excesses and the dangers of the Me Too movement have been trying to tell you. We've been trying to tell you that this is going to get weaponized. This is going to get used in very ugly, vile ways. This is going to be used to smear people who have done nothing wrong, to try to destroy the careers of people who have done nothing wrong. And this this Alex Moore situation is a perfect example of that. It's a completely trumped up sexual allegation that's not even a sexual allegation that is being tried to use to end his political career. I mean, this, this is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. And the fact that there was anybody who thought this was a good idea or anybody who thinks that he did something wrong. I I don't know. I don't know what to say to that. That's so crazy. So crazy. He did nothing wrong. And he's right to not apologize. I, I don't know what anybody wanted him to apologize for. What... I, I, I matched with people on Grinder, and then we went and had sex. Who fucking cares? Who cares? He's 31. He's single. What? But that, that aspect of that, of being young and single and gay and in public office, reminded me of Pete Buttigieg and when he came out when he was the mayor of South Bend. And if you remember, I know I've talked about it, but it's been a minute, 
essentially he came out in a letter. He, when he was elected, he was still closeted. He came out while he was in office. And the reason why he came out is that he wanted to start dating. He wanted to find somebody to spend the rest of his life with. And he was in his early 30s, too, when he came out in that way. And so it's a pretty natural thing for somebody in their early 30s to want to try to find a partner. Like, that's pretty normal. I mean, I don't, I don't see where the problem is with that. And I think, actually, Buddha Judge found his husband on a dating app. Oh, that's funny. But, I mean, it's, it's, this is what people do. Like, I'm not understanding. Like, okay, he's 31. He wants to date. Maybe he wants to find a steady boyfriend. Maybe he wants to find somebody to marry. I, I'm, that's normal. I mean, we don't wonder when straight people do that. So maybe he just wants to find somebody to date. And I mean, who, who is he going to find on his level to date? Like, if you want to make the argument that, oh, well, people should only date people on their level. He's a 31-year-old mayor and congressional candidate. Is there some kind of app for ridiculously overachieving gay men to meet other ridiculously overachieving gay men in order to not have some kind of power imbalance in their relationship? Like, who is he supposed to date? Who else has that kind of resume? Nobody. Nobody else has that kind of resume. It's just him. So what? He's supposed to, like, just be alone for the rest of his life? Like, it's just such an absurd way of looking at relationships, too. This idea that Within relationships, you have these bizarre power struggles due to people being either different ages or at different points in their career or different points in their life. That's just, it's, it's a putting on that oppressor oppressed paradigm onto relationships. And it's just really, really a, such a horrible way to look at relationships. I mean, you can't reduce Every single thing to being some kind of zero-sum game where there's a winner and a loser. Like, sure, people who are different ages get together. People who maybe one person's a CEO and the other person's in, like, lower management. Like, I don't know. I don't... It, whatever works for you. There's people that don't even think about it at all. It's just you like who you like. You love who you love. You marry who you marry. And you don't really give a shit. If they have the same job title as you or have accomplished the same amount of things that you've accomplished or the same age as you, you just love that person. And so you marry them or you get into a relationship with them or you just you have sex with them because you want to have sex with them and you don't really give a shit about anything else going on in their world <laughs> because you're just there for yours. Like, I, it's, I, it's just such a weird way uh, of looking at sexual and romantic relationships. And I think maybe I'll elaborate on that at some point in the future, either on the podcast or in writing. But I think that's, that might be the basis of a lot of the weirdness that young people have around relationships and around sexuality, thinking that you have to be like completely equal to the other person. Otherwise there's a power dynamic and one person's getting objectified or used or groomed or whatever. It's like, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. But like I said, I wanted to do this episode just on this situation because, like I said, it's just, it's a perfect storm of everything that sucks right now. And, I mean, hopefully for Morse, this works out for him. I mean, I hope he wins. Honestly, like, it's not that I want to see another progressive in Congress, but, I mean, anybody who's willing to stoop to the kinds of levels that the Neil campaign, and like I said, I don't care. They had something to do with this. You can't tell me they didn't. And the Massachusetts Democratic Party, if you're willing to go that low, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve to be in Congress. You deserve to lose your seat to a 31-year-old progressive. Because clearly, clearly you're scum. And I really don't want scumbags in Congress either. I, I, I know. I know it's full of scumbags. But if we can get rid of one, I wouldn't mind that. Just, there you go. But at this point... I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I said everything I wanted to say on the topic. So if you did make it this far, thank you for listening. And if you do like this, please rate, comment, and subscribe. You can find me on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, YouTube, and on my Patreon page. Take care and until next time.